shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for listening, whether you're listening live at 101.1 FM, The Answer, at 1 o'clock Central on, uh, what are we, it's September 7th. So if you're listening live locally on The Answer out of Little Rock, Central Arkansas area, or via the stream at 101.1 FM, The Answer.com, just glad to have you. Or if you're listening by podcast or one of the other ways that the show goes out, for example, on Krypton Radio, uh, after the main broadcast, I just, I just love it all. And I'm just so glad that you guys are here. So today is going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge. Every now and then uh, I switch gears on the show and just have fun and, and cover just a lot of different topics. Uh, we've called it before the Geek News Vortex, the Geek News Tsunami uh, different things. Today, it's just going to be the geek hodgepodge. And uh, we're going to just me and Zach are going to shoot the, the geek breeze and have fun. And I, and I like doing shows that, uh, like this every now and then just just kind of following my nose and having fun with it. So that's what we are going to do today. So uh, that being said, you can call in at uh, 501-823-0965. Feel free to call in and be part of the discussion or add a topic, or, you know, uh, get my opinion, or whatever, or offer your opinion, whatever, love to have you, 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays, that's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S, so uh, with no further ado, let's uh, let's get this hodgepodge uh, cooking, Zach, how the heck are you today, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, I'm doing great. All right, that's good, so what we're going to do, Zach, is we're we're about to go on hiatus starting I think September twenty eighth for football. Yes, and, and uh, so we'll be off the air roughly not quite two months. We'll come back. We'll end of September and then we'll come back sometime early November, hopefully. Uh, but if if in past years the uh, Washita Baptist football has gone into the playoffs, yeah. so it may extend. Uh, but you said this year that their lineup is is not as deep or as strong as it has been in recent years. Is that right? Yeah, they're a little bit younger this year. However, you know, they're a pretty talented still. So we'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. However it works out. And what, I, what, I, what I'll what normally do when I'm on a hi- hiatus like this is I will uh, – I'll do like special podcasts and do more YouTube streaming and stuff like that. So yeah. if there's people out there – they keep up with Shane plays that way, then, you know, you'll probably see a little bit more of that going on, but I've, I've got kind of a cool news story here, Zach, that I wanted to start the show off with. Okay. And that is, uh, I guess, you know, last, I don't know if it was Sunday night. Anyways, recently, uh, last weekend, basically weird Al Yankovic came to town. Oh, and, yeah, and he's, you know, Weird Al. Of course, everybody knows Weird Al. Mm-hmm. He's been around since the 80s doing really cool, fun parody songs. Yeah. And, you know, he, uh, I don't know, he just, he's he, evidently by all accounts, he's a nice guy. You know, everybody everybody just loves Weird Al. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if you want a taste of Weird Al's humor, either listen to his songs or or watch VHF, which is a really fun movie that came out in the 80s. I recommend any of that. So we have a story here from THV 11 it says weird Al Yankovic surprises longtime fan battling cancer at UAMS. Uh, and, and so they, he visited a fan, uh, with a surprise visit in the hospital. Yeah. So here, here's the, uh, the author, uh, the byline is THV 11. So I don't know who the actual, uh, you know, byline is on the story, but it's from THV 11.com. And it says that one longtime fan was too sick to make the show, but as it turns out, what happened to him was even better. The singer and comedian came to visit him in his hospital room. Uh, So Lonnie Craig, uh, uh, his sister, Julie Craig, reached out to the singer on social media, tweeting, my brother is currently in UAMS Hospital in Little Rock with cancer. I just found out Weird Al is going to be in Little Rock September 1st trying to connect. And then... 
uh, UAMS, I guess, got involved and, and helped make the connection. And, and there's a, uh, there's a picture, a couple of pictures of Lonnie, you know, in the hospital bed, you know, with the, the typical, he's in the bed with a hospital gown and everything on. And there's weird, weird Al hanging out with him. So in UAMS health, Julie Craig tweeted out UAMS health. Want to say thanks for helping this, uh, make this come true. And it, and it says that Lonnie, uh, has been a fan of Weird Al since the 80s. And it, and it looks like maybe Weird Al brought him a t-shirt. So that's really cool. That's a, that's a nice that's a nice story. So I, I'm glad that, that Weird Al did that. And again, you know, everybody I know that, that's Matt Emer spent time with him says he seems to be a genuinely nice guy. That's cool. Also, yeah, it's very cool. Also want to give a shout out to the local uh, 501st Gar- Garrison, the, uh, the Stormtrooper, costuming organization that does a lot of work for charity. They, uh, I, I guess we're, you know, cause Weird Al has a couple of Star Wars related songs. One is the saga begins and the other one is Yoda. Those are the two main ones that are Star Wars related that I know of. And I guess is his encore. He came out or is his last songs. He did those and he had all the, the people from, um, or the local 501st garrison gotten their stormtrooper costumes and they take this very seriously i mean their costumes are like really nice and and they really go out of their way to help people with charity and uh they were up on stage and one of my uh friends i know through the geek community tracy wilson i guess was up there in a scout trooper costume and weird al actually like leaned on him and like kind of hung on his shoulder for part of the performance so i bet you tracy's like i'm never washing that shoulder again so but anyway, that's, that's really neat. And it was a no strings attached concert, which I, I guess he, or strings attached, I think was the name of the tour. And so he had an orchestra with him. So, I, and, and I saw a lot of people that I know posted pictures and everything and, and everybody I talked to sounded like it was a really fun, uh, costume or not costume, a really fun concert. So that's, that's a, that's a nice story. I, I, I like opening up with something positive like that. So, uh, all right, Zach, I got a, uh, got to ask you and and again so today i also want to mention since we're doing um the uh an extended geek hodgepodge with you involved i also want to mention you know we have the ongoing speaking of sagas we have the saga with our news team sal uh the head of the news team uh we're not our news team sal our, our news team's not named sal the head of our news team is named sal and uh, his grandmother and her dog, Muffin, they get upset if I don't banter with you during a show. So what I was going to mention earlier when we're talking about we're going on a hiatus, I'm hoping that an entire show of Zach banter will help defray any retaliation or bad feelings for us going on hiatus. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. So Muffin, if you're out there, you know, I, I, I beseech you for mercy, uh, the, this whole football thing is, is out of is out of my is out of my hands so anyway you know zach i wanted to uh tell people or remind people that you know back in the day you told me that uh, you were hoping to be a sports analyst is that still is that still the case is that still kind of where you're hoping your career goes well i mean as of right now i'm i'm pretty much open uh, to tell you the truth i don't know i mean i'm really not sure at the moment Okay. Well, the the reason I was asking was because, you know, I know football starting Mm -hmm. and, you know, we got stuff. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to stretch your, your, your sports analyst wings, I don't know bupkis about sports, but I'll, (laughs) I'll, I'll pretend to give a crap. So if you want to talk about sports for a couple of minutes and stretch those wings and tell me who you think is going to go all the way in either, you know, college football or pro, pro football or both. You just, you let loose, pal. Sure. Well, see, you yeah. know, right now, you know, the college football season just started about two weeks ago. The first week was really just a week for, you know, I think there was one or two really main teams that play from the Power Five conferences. And what I mean yeah. by the Power Five conferences, they are BSEC, ACC, Big Ten, Pac-12, those main conferences. But, you know, the first but how week, do, How do you think the ABC conference is going to do this year you know, the AC, abc the abc <laughs> are they going to go all the way i hear i hear they have a really a really deep deep lineup of of free throws <laughs> <laughs> i 
I don't know how to react to that. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, like I say, you know, it's been going on for about two weeks now. Uh, this is the third week, and it's the second big week. And to, of course, tonight Arkansas is playing um, Ole Miss. But I think you know who, as far as who's going to win it all, you know, in the college football this year. The main two teams that really, you know, everyone is believing is going to go all the way is, is Alabama and Clemson. And those were the two teams that played in the championship game this past season. And so, um, you know, those two te- one of those two teams, I believe, probably should win it all. But you never know. You never know. That's the thing about That's what's great about football. You never know. And as, let's go towards the NFL, you know, when we look at, you know, the National Football League. Of course, you still have my team, you know, the New England Patriots. They are the defending Super Bowl NFL champions, you know, six times since the year 2001. <laughs> but you're not counting. And yes, I am not counting. It's just, you know, it just happens to, you know, the facts are there. The stats are there for everyone to know. I don't have to say anything. They just know when I say the New okay. England Patriots. So. They are definitely, you know, a favorite. They should be one of the favorites. And, of course, you're still in the, in the same conference they're in because there's two conferences in the, in the NFL. You have the National Football Conference, which is the NFC, and you have the American uh, Football Conference, which is the AFC. The Patriots are in the AFC, and they have another rival or, or opponent, you could say, who's probably battling them for, you know, who could go to the, to the Super Bowl this year, and that's the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, we got to look at them as well as a favorite to win it all. And then if we go look at the NFC, you have, you can look at the Dallas Cowboys. You could probably look at, you know, um, the Seattle Seahawks. You can look at um, the Los Angeles Rams. There's some different teams in the NFC that could possibly be a favorite to go on and win it all. But it's a toss up. I think it's, I think in the NFL, it's um, less of a um, guarantee as opposed to college football. You know, who, who's going to go on and win it all or whoever is favorite most likely will go on and win it all. But, you know, you just never know, to tell you the truth. You just never know. Any given Sunday. Yes. You know, any given Sunday. OK, so here's let me let me add my my uh, my insightful analysis to all that. Go sports ball. Yay, team. Do that thing. <laughs> so. I, that man, I just cannot. I'm just, I'm just besides myself with excitement. Yeah. Uh, for, for, for sports kicking back up. So, <laughs> all right, let's talk something a little bit more up my alley, pal. But now I know last week that your movie that you had seen recently was The Lion King. Yes. And that, and it's actually one of your favorite, you know, Disney movies, and and you know the the animated one. But you said you really liked the new version. The, so yeah, it that was, was. I was like, it was not bad. It was actually, you know, it surprised me. Maybe because of what I, everything I've heard about the movie beforehand, and I was kind of feeling down about it. But going in with no expectations, it was actually good. It's pretty good. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Just yeah. go in and just you know sit back and and let the movie be the movie. That's right. So there there's a lot of movies that. You know, people are like terrible. They're, it's terrible, and then I'm like, I what? What was wrong with it? It's you because know? you so, probably sat at yeah. home and just wa- enjoyed the movie for two hours, which you're supposed to do. Right, right, right. So there's a couple of movies I finally caught up on that I've been wanting to see. Okay, and uh, one was uh, the Us Us movie yes. from from Jordan Peele. Yes. Now, have, have you seen that yet? I saw that earlier this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I finally I finally got to watch it last weekend, and. I, it was good. I got but you. But it, it, I don't think it was as good as Get Out. I totally agree. I think Us was more, how could I put it? Um, there was more of a hidden message behind Us as opposed to Get Out. You know, yeah, I think, well, uh, right. I thought with Us, the basic premise, I, I don't think this is spoiling anything. No. Uh, because the, the trailers have shown all this and the movie's been out for a while. But the basic premise is... There's a family mm-hmm. uh, on vacation, and uh, at night, all of a sudden, this other family shows up in their in the in the driveway. Yeah, that's basically copies of them and mm-hmm. wants to replace them. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So I thought I thought that now, first of all, I got to say Jordan Peele is, I think he's a real strong filmmaker and storyteller i got you i think i think he's doing some really interesting stuff now i haven't seen his twilight zone 
that he's doing over on CBS yeah. uh, streaming because I've heard it's it's full of profanity and this and that. And I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. Gotcha. And that's disappointing to me because, I mean, as the Twilight Zone has proven over the years, you could tell compelling Twilight Zone stories without yeah. having to get gratuitous. And, and see, so, Shane, that's a great point. And to me, that right. that that crosses to um, a lot of different people who produces and directs movies or television, television right. series. You don't have to be that way. You don't. And I mean, I understand that sometimes a profanity at the right spot or or something in your face at the right moment can, yeah. I guess, artistically enhance the moment. But that's a far cry from a lot of what you get in current entertainment where it's just constant, you know. And uh, again, there's, you know, uh, the Twilight Zone the original twilight zone still holds up real strong and and it told amazing compelling stories and it didn't have to have any of that stuff. Yeah. And I know there's, I know there's people out there that are listening and they don't care. They're like, I don't care if there's profane and that's fine. Right. I mean, it's a, a, you know, in a lot of ways, entertainment's neutral. That's your choice. If you want to watch that and you, that's fine. But I personally don't want it if I can avoid it. So, uh, you know, and, but, and that's the Twilight Zone. I could be, that's just hearsay for all I know the Twilight, the new Twilight Zone isn't even that way, yeah. but that's what I've heard. Uh, but it's also, I mean, you know, I personally have avoided Game of Thrones okay, uh, and yeah. some other stuff because I hear the content's pretty, pretty strong at some point. So, you know, if that's just my personal choice, I'm, I don't want people to think that I think they suck if they do it. That's their thing, man. There's probably stuff I watch that's real violent that other people are like, that's too violent for me, you yeah. know? So, you know, it's, it's all subjective. But anyway, so us getting back to us. And I do think that Jordan Peele's a really strong film. I mean, get out was spectacularly amazing. Right. Uh, and then, and then us was really strong in my opinion for like the first half. Okay. And, and then once everything really started happening, I thought it kind of lost a little bit of its, I- punch i kind of agree see i think it got a little yep. bit confusing you know yeah. that's, that's a great point you bring up because i think it got a little bit confused and that's why i bring up about the hidden message behind the movie and i'm right. like you know i've heard people say that you know they reviewed the film and said that you know it's, it's really up to us how we you know perceive the film but you know i just sometimes i want simplicity like i just want to know yeah what was it well i mean it's pretty obvious to me and, you know, reading, you know, usually after a movie that that I think is compelling, I will go read up on it a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, Jordan Peele and others have basically said that that one of the underlying messages was was about America and the haves and the have nots. Right. So, you know, and they and they could they call it was really interesting because he called back to this thing called Hands Across America. Yes. From the, from the 80s. And that was, you know, that was a really strong part of the the theme of the movie you know and they even uh when the replacement family is talking to the family they want to replace in the living room yeah you know the mom's like who are you and the replacement family's like we're americans so there's there was a lot of stuff going on there yep but but there was a lot there was interesting things i really cheered for the family when instead of just being victims they they fought back uh, that was that felt really good because a lot of horror movies the the victims are just almost like stupid sheep and just yeah. let whatever happens to them happen. But this family's like we're not doing that. Right. And the the horror wasn't in them being like stalked. The horror was in the basic premise of what was going on that we that we want to replace you. So by them fighting back uh, and being clever. And and it didn't take away from the horror of the overall premise. So I, I thought that was really good. And, but I think that I think where it kind of lost some of its punch and energy for me was about halfway through the movie. It stops being personal and it starts being like nationwide. Yeah. And and that's where it kind of lost some of the punch for me because it you know it, it changed the dynamic of what was going on because it's even it's even more horrible if it's just targeting your family. Right. You know, if it's happening to everybody, it's more like a natural disaster. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think it lost a little bit of punch that, you know, but it, it was still interesting, you know, and it, it for, for all I'm saying, I mean, it's 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 still a 
above par movie, yeah. right? For the average movie out there. And Jordan Peele is telling really interesting stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's doing it from so far, he's doing it from uh, Get Out was very much like you could not ignore the fact that the, that the main protagonist, the fact that he was black or African-American or how you want to say it was yeah. the main part of the movie. Mm -hmm. This, this movie, the main family was black, but that didn't, it was just like, we, it, that wasn't part of the theme. You yeah. know what I mean? It mm -hmm. was like, it could have been a white family. Exactly. Right. So, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, and in fact, there was one part that was really funny because the dad kept being funny, even <laughs> right. when crazy stuff was going on. Yeah. But he said some, he's like, something happened or they did something that almost got him caught. Or he's like, what kind of white BS was that? Yeah. <laughs> And I thought that was extremely funny. So yeah. we have to be able to laugh at ourselves. You know, that's not worth getting upset over. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'll tell you another movie I finally got to catch. Okay. That I've really been wanting to watch. And this almost, I think this made my top five movies I wanted to see in 2019, that annual show I do with Dave Ellswick. Yeah. It, was, it either made it or it was a runner up. I'd have to go look. But I finally got to see Brightburn. Oh, I didn't watch Brightburn. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah, so Brightburn, and it was about what I expected. Yeah. And it it actually, this movie, it only made like 30-something million dollars. Yeah. But the budget was six million. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I mean, it, it was a successful movie and we may get a sequel. But the, but the conceit or the concept or whatever on uh, Brightburn, and they've done this in the comics, but I don't think a movie has ever really done this, maybe like a cartoon, you know, an animated series episode, but it's basically what if Superman turned out to be a bad seed Yeah, and, and not a noble heart. Yeah. And so, and, and what they did is, is so they kind of took the Superman mythos mm -hmm. up until basically the Superboy type character turns 12. Yeah. And then at 12, the uh the rocket ship that he came in that's like hidden in the barn yeah activates and like programs him oh so to me that was part of because this is supposed to be a horror movie yeah not a sci not a sci-fi movie and to me that's part of the horror because up until that point he was just a friendly happy kid wow that's a goodness yeah that, oh my yeah and so then he gets like programmed and, and I, I think it's supposed to be kind of like puberty, right? He turns 12. And, yeah. But, but he had, they, they talk earlier in the movie about um, wasps and the difference between, between bees and wasps when he's in school. Yeah. And the difference is the, the, the point they're making is that like Superman was a bee. Mm -hmm. This, this kid is a wasp. This mm. kid's a predator. Mm. And they talk about these wasps, these types of wasps that will, uh, colonize other nests and stuff like that. And they're making the point that this, this alien was sent to earth to take it over. Wow. Right. If you're reading between the lines, yeah. but, but it's really sad because he's just a normal, happy, regular kid. And then he just one night, he like around his 12th birthday, he did like, he gets activated and he, and he completely changes oh and he, lo he loses all of his empathy. See, that makes me uh, really want to go watch the movie now. Wow. Yeah, well, he, and it's to me, see, what they tried to do was they tried to make it a jump scare horror movie mm -hmm. where, there, where there's people like they're, they're in their house or they're driving down a dark road or they're running and trying to hide and he keeps zipping by real quick, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then, and that to me was not scary because you're like, I already know that it's basically Superboy. That's <laughs> not scary to me. Right. Um, what was, what was scary to me was his complete, he just lost all empathy. Mm. Uh, and he was, you know, he was still trying to pretend to be a normal kid, but the people close to him, like his parents were figuring out something ain't right here. Yeah. Uh, and then he starts killing people that are going against what he wants to have happen. And the scare, so the lack of empathy is the scary thing. And then just out of nowhere, there'll, there'll be these moments of just brutality, Goodness. you know, just out of the blue brutality that kind of really show what if somebody's powerful on the level of Superman, what he can do to somebody. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me was much more scary 
from the 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 premises horrible than the jump scare stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but it it it's got um, it it was it was pretty much what I wanted it to be. And in fact, some ways it was more interesting than than I thought it would be because I heard some negative stuff about it. You know, kind of going back to I guess people having preconceived notions of what of what they want in the movie or whatever. But but I thought it was done pretty well, and and we may get a sequel, and and they hint around in the uh, right before the credits roll or during the first credits. Uh, there's some hinting around that they may actually the sequel may lead into like a dark superhero world where like there's an evil Aquaman and an evil Wonder Woman and stuff like that. I was just about to ask you if this was going to yeah. be part of a universe or something, you know? Well, they, they, they kind of teased it, you okay. know, and, and James Gunn produced it. Uh, and then the guy who directed it, you know, James Gunn does like guardians of the galaxy yeah. and he's doing the new side squad movie. Uh, and then he, uh, the guy who directed the movie, do you remember the beginning of, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where there's like this two or three minute sequence of little Groot running around, and it's like a music video almost while yes. they're fighting. The main okay, the guy who directed the movie was the guy who made that part. Gotcha, because I'm looking at his name right now. Yeah, it took him like two years to make that little animated sequence for Guardians of the Galaxy. So now I will say there's not a whole lot of language in Brightburn, but it is R rated. And there's some there's some brutality and some gore, gore that I could have done without, to be quite honest. But I think what they were trying to do was show how brutal he could be That's and right. how how fragile human beings would be compared to somebody like this. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 pretty interesting stuff. Well, I mean, so, uh, well, the movie was only an hour and a half long. So, you know, like I say, for this hour and a half. Hey, this is what you're paying for. This is Ray right. Dar. This right. is what you're gonna get. I thought it was. I thought it was an interesting. Um, I thought it was an interesting movie. So, and and the Brightburn thing is uh, his name. You know, like most superheroes have like alliteration, like Clark Kent or you know Peter Parker or whatever. Well, he's he's BB. I can't remember what his Briar something. Brandon Briar, I think, is his name. So he comes up with this little symbol that it has two B's in it, like the letter B, but also the name of the the town they're in, I guess, is Brightburn, Kansas. Oh. Uh, and, and then he starts and people start calling him Brightburn when they have like a little fuzzy video of something in the sky. You know, they start calling him Brightburn. Oh, so and he does some messed up stuff with his heat vision. That's all I got to say. Whew. So, yeah. Yeah. But they also the other thing, one thing I'll kind of give it a negative if I'm nitpicking you know, they gave him this weird mask that was supposed to be scary. Yeah. And again, that just they didn't need it. That made it kind of stupid. Did he like, look I, like I said, the scarecrow? I, I don't think. Yeah. What's that? I said, did he look like the scarecrow? <laughs> yeah, he had this kind of dumb scarecrow mask. I think it was supposed to make him look like a horror figure. But again, I don't think that the filmmakers trusted that the very premise of what was happening was the horror. Right. Yeah. You know. The, the the mask, in my opinion, was unnecessary, you know, but but anyway. All right. So uh, another thing I wanted to, you know, let people know, I haven't gotten to watch it yet, but Titans season two is out on uh, yep. DC Universe now. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess this season, one of the classic uh, storylines from the Titans comic books is Trigon. Yes. Is is basically a demon from another dimension and, 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 sh- and he is Raven's father. That's right. That's right. So this season is dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that's good. You know, cause at the end of last season, they came out of the house or they were in the, and they all had like those black eyes and, you know, there was obviously something wrong with the Titans. Yep. Uh, like, been you know, possessed or something like that. So it should be pretty interesting stuff. I would like to say again, I'm going to get back on my horse I, I enjoyed, I've, I've mentioned this several times on the show. You and I have talked about it. Right. I enjoyed Titan season one from a, I was like, I could appreciate the art and the effort and the professionalism that went into making the show. Uh, and the storyline itself was pretty interesting, but I could do without all the gratuitous violence and gore and blood. It's just, that's never, ever been part 
of the Titans in the comic books. So I don't I don't understand why they have to do that. It's like it's like that's the only way that it's going to catch on, I, I th- and I just disagree with that. And I think Shane, I think it's just maybe it's becoming a lost art of you know how, telling a story without becoming so dark. I I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's becoming a lost art today. You know, yeah. just more and more people do well, it. Well, I'm hoping that uh, you know we got the Picard series coming on on uh, CBS streaming. And that's the first time that I'm like, okay, I'll probably check out CBS streaming because I want to see the Picard series. I've been very disappointed with Discovery. Yeah, I started getting excited about season two of Discovery, and then I found out there was going to be a heavy emphasis on – it's called like Section 31, or it's like the Black Ops part of Starfleet. Uh, and, and so I kind of backed back off. And then, But I'm interested in this Picard show, and I really hope Picard is not dark and – you know, whatever, because the next generation show, even though it dealt with dark themes at times, the show itself was never dark. Right. Ever. And, and I don't want Picard to be dark. So, but, but I'll give it a chance, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see, you know, um, I'll, I'll see what it does, you know, and I want to, I want to recommend people again, the Orville is really, in my opinion, carrying, the torch for what I see as Trek. And and I think for the third season, it's moving to Hulu, you know, and yes, it's, it's Seth. Uh, oh, darn it. Seth. I, I can't believe I'm forgetting is the guy, the guy from family guy and this and that. So every now and then there's some sophomoric immature humor, frat boy humor, but the show itself is pretty strong and they deal with some pretty, pretty good themes. When the show first started, it was about 50% frat boy humor and about 50% Star Trek. But as it's going, I would say it's probably about 90% straight storytelling with about 10% of that frat boy humor. Okay. So that's, that's kind of how I'd, I would recommend it. And then, you know, of course, talking about um, DC Universe streaming and all that, you know, talking about Titans, I, I think there's a, a Harley Quinn show coming, I think, that's animated. Swamp Thing wrapped up. Swamp Thing was pretty good. I heard that. Uh, it was a little bit loose in a couple of spots, but I, I, I would I would have definitely watched season two. You know, if it had, there was some weird, it didn't have anything to do with the show itself. There was some arguing uh, about taxes and stuff in the in Louisiana, I think, where it was being filmed. And so, it, you know, hopefully it'll come back. Um, another DC related thing, Batman Hush came out. Uh, yes. a few weeks back. Did you did you watch that yet? I did watch it. Um this one thing I just didn't like about the about the movie was the twist. That was it. Mm-hmm. Well, they uh they changed the twist slightly. Yeah. From the the comic. Have you ever read the comic book? I haven't heard uh, I didn't read them, but I, I basically I know about it because I've read articles about it and everything. Okay, they did change the twist a little bit. Yeah. But I thought it was pretty good. I I'm not I, I've never been one of the people that thought that the, I, I think that the hush, so I think it was a 12 issue storyline. Mm-hmm. It was in continuity. It wasn't like a special out of continuity thing. I, I liked it. The best thing I like about that is I like how they did the relationship between Batman and Catwoman. And I love Jim Lee's art, but the story itself never blew me away. Like it did so many people. So I thought it was good, but I don't think it's like one of the all time great Batman stories. Like a lot of people do, but that Jim Lee art, is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, you know, and I'm not really a huge Jim Lee fan. Like a lot of people are, but his art on Batman, the way he drew the details on Batman. And I, I really liked it a lot, but I, I would give hush itself, the animated movie a, about a six, maybe a seven, you know, it's all right. Uh, I, I love all the animated stuff. I thought that Batman versus teenage mutant Ninja turtles was way better. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, as a as a whole product. So, mm-hmm. and I can't remember. I know they're doing another Wonder Woman movie. I can't remember what else. But so far, I mean, I'm a big fan of all the of all the DC animated stuff. I I buy them all when they come out. Hey, so I, I think maybe you just uh, I think they probably taking their time and just putting out good stuff. Yep. And um, you know what? Stop listening to the critics or whatever. Just do do your own thing at your own pace. Yeah, they're. I think what they do. Or at one time, they were going to put out one Batman per year. And then one other, right? Like a Superman or okay. a Wonder Woman or Flash, whatever. You know, they and at one time that was their concept. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they're still doing that or not. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kind of move us towards a break, Zach. Uh, but when we get back, 
we're going to talk a little bit about D&D. And there's this big thing out there where people want to make it Gary Gygax versus Dave Arneson. And I'll, I'll go more into that after uh, the break. But I just I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think that's just pointless at, at this point. And, and let's just enjoy the game that we have D&D and the tabletop role playing hobby that we have. Uh, but but again, I'll, I'll go into that more after the break. I also wanted to the Mobley Detective Agency sent me some information about an anime. I want to throw this uh, throw this around out there really quick. The Mobley Detective Agency, my friend Justin, he's one of those people that has been watching anime forever. Yeah, and and he loves all the. I've got a big fist. I'm going to knock you in the face, and I'm going to power up anime yeah but he also gets into all these anime that are completely different genres Mm -hmm. you know it might be a war anime or it might be this or it might be a kid growing up and learning about war or it might be somebody you know it's it's all there's all different kinds of manga and anime out there and i asked him i said hey do you have a a recommendation for today and he mentioned one called real life r-e-l-i-f-e And from Wikipedia, he was telling me about this earlier in the week, and it sounded like a really interesting story. But I want to recommend this to people out there, because I think a lot of people think the anime is just Dragon Ball type stuff. Yes. Or just, you know, Naruto or just Monster Hunter. You know, there's other stuff out there. Uh, The story revolves around 27-year-old Arata Kaizaki, who has been unemployed for several years after quitting his job of three months, claiming it's because it does not fit his highest potential. As a result of this action, he finds it difficult to gain a full-time job at another company, and instead he works as a part-timer at a mini-market. One day, a mysterious man named Ryo Yoki offers him a job opportunity, but first, he needs to become a tester for real life, a scientific experiment to make him appear 10 years younger and send him back to high school as a student. So it does it, it's not time travel, it just makes you seem younger. Uh, and the experiment is supposed to provide a chance to experience youth once again and in the process fix whatever is wrong with the subject's life. And he was telling me about this earlier in the week, and it's really fascinating. So I recommend people – it's either – there's an anime, and there's also a multi-volume manga for it out there. But it's R-E-L-I-F-E. Thanks for the recommendation, I, Justin, a.k.a. the Mobley Detective Agency. What were you going to say? I just say I have one, add one to that, and it's My Hero Academia. That's one for yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, My Hero Academia is great, and yep. Justin has actually been loaning me. I think I watched season one because of him, and, okay. I, and I really liked it a lot. I so. just restarted it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, okay, well, I just want to gonna get us to a break. I wanted to remind, remind people about my pra- Patreon. I do have a Patreon. I have sponsors for this show, but it's it's they don't cover – you know, this is a radio show first and then a uh, podcast second. And I love doing it. It's a labor of love. I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, I never want to say if I don't get Patreon money that the show is going to go away. But if you like this show, if you like Geek Talk Radio and the and the v- varied topics that I try to cover and, and the method that I try to do it in, the style, you know, I sure would appreciate your support at uh, patreon.com slash shameplays. And you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. And don't forget about Dungeons and Desktops, the history of computer role-playing game, second edition, my book with Matt Barton and Matt Chat, which I was uh, pleased and honored to be a co-author on. Do some quick show notes here. Don't forget the show. If you're listening to the podcast or Krypton radio version of the show, the show notes are at shameplays.com, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S.com. Last week's show is out there. It was episode 198, The Joker Psychology with Dr. Travis Langley, the superheroologist. That was a really cool show. Um, just going into the real life and fictional psychology aspects of the Joker and Harley Quinn. And then, you know, the podcast does go out on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more. And if you listen to the podcast version like iTunes or Google Play Music or Stitcher, any of those, please leave it a review. That helps me. It doesn't, even, it doesn't have to be a five star or whatever. Just, you know, uh, would love to love to have you review. The reviews help me get visibility and also you know it's good feedback for me so i really would appreciate a review you know if you do listen to the to the show on 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 one of those platforms and then last but never ever least shame plays is carried on krypton radio krypton radio is sci-fi for your wi-fi kryptonradio.com all right zach get us to a break are you a fan of thrilling adventure daring suspense and just a touch of romance kursova has you covered since 2016 kursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. 
Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasury Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C I R S O V A. It doesn't start with a K, it starts with a C. C I R S O V A, Kursova Magazine. Check them out today. And speaking of Michael Tierney's uh, comic book shops, comic book lovers, head to Michael Tierney's local comic book stores for the newest books on the shelves, plus a fantastic selection of back issues. Visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock and Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock. And don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com. Michael Tierney knows comics. In addition to being in business for nearly four decades, and publishing his own comic book series, The Wild Stars, for almost as long and still going, he has written multiple columns for comics magazines and is an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. Michael is also the author of the wildly successful, high-quality, four-volume labor of love, the Edgar Rice Burroughs 100-Year Art Chronology. Remember, for all of your comic book needs with friendly service, make sure to visit the comic book store and Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock, Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock, and thewildstars.com to learn more. Tell them Shane Play sent you. And last, but never, ever, ever least, I want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Today's show is a geek hodgepodge. Me and Zach are just geeking out. One, because it's always fun to talk with Zach. Two, I'm trying to build up some Zach banter credit ahead of time before we uh, take a hiatus from the end of September till no, uh, early to mid-November for football so that uh, Z- Sal's grandmother and his dog Muffin or her dog Muffin won't, won't take sweet, sweet vengeance upon us. So want to give a quick shout out to Doug Gillum. He's a he's a longtime listener to the show. He's always very encouraging on Twitter. He pushed out a thing saying, "Get on board, the Shane train is rolling on." Uh, Shane plays in it, and he put out a thing with the the times and the and the info on on the on the show on Twitter. Doug, I always appreciate you, and it's always a pleasure when I get to run into you, like Michael Tierney's comic book stores or something. Okay, we got about uh, what are you about about nine minutes, Zach? Is that where we're at now? That is correct. Okay, I forgot to mention during the first part of the show that I am officially cool now. Like they have people have to acknowledge that I'm cool. Do you want to know why? Yeah, I bought a lava lamp, baby. <laughs> oh yeah, uh... oh yeah. I'm looking at it right now, and it's it's like blue water and green yellowish lava. It's so psychedelic you, that my my entire neighborhood has turned cooler. You know, the only time I, whenever I hear a lava lamp, I think of the um. Elevi- the television show cartoon Ed and Nettie. That's what I think of. Oh yeah, that's what you think of. Yeah. Well, I'm officially cool, and nobody can tell me that I'm not cool. I got a flipping lava lamp. I'm looking at it right now, and I know it's cool because my five year old likes it. So I, I'm definitely cool. It's it's completely unassailable my coolness. So I'm going to talk about D and D a little bit. Something that rears its head every now and then in the tabletop role playing game community. 
Before I do that, I want to mention Dungeons and Dragons is getting its first Funko Pops, which is really cool. Uh, this is a story from comicbook.com. Byline is Sean Fallon. This was uh, published on August 26th. And Funko, and you know what Funko is, right, Zach? Not sure. Okay, Funko is those little figures you see all over the place where they've got small bodies and big heads and they're almost like bobbleheads. Oh, okay. And, I know what and you're talking they're, about. they're anything, you know, any anything you can imagine. Like I'm looking, I've got a couple I'm looking at right now. Like I've got a Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe and a, and a Tom Baker Doctor Who setting up on my whatever. And I've got a ton more in boxes and stuff. So they're extremely collectible. Just about any pop culture, a lot of times sports, whatever, they'll make them. And now they're going to start making uh, Dungeons and & Dragons. And, and they're going to roll out, uh, I think, starting... They're up for pre-order right now. I'm thinking they're going to start shipping in sep- uh, February. And we're starting off with uh, Asmodeus, a.k.a. the Lord of the Nine Hells. The Ranger Minsk and his miniature giant space hamster companion, Boo, which the famous says, go for the eyes, Boo. And the Mind Flayer, which you may be familiar with because of D&D and or Stranger Things. And then there's also these things called Figurines of Adorable Power that we're now some May are going to start shipping this month. And that was the Owlbear and Red Dragon figurines. So speaking of, I don't have time to go in on the show right now, but speaking of Stranger Things, I finally finished season one. Yes. So, yeah, all I got to say is I got to give a shout out to Steve because that dude came around at the end and he can work. He could show Negan a thing or two about bats. It's how about one of the best um, character arcs in the series. There you yeah, go. Loving some Steve. All right. So I got to move on. Just got a couple of minutes here. So I did a special podcast uh, last December because I, I did I couldn't work it into my schedule on the show to have him on. But I had Griff, who's one of the filmmakers uh, the Secrets of Blackmore, the True History of Dungeons and Dragons documentary when it was being kickstarted, and it's out now. I'll put the link in the show notes. I'll put the link in the show notes so people can go watch it if they want. It's a very good documentary. But it explores – There's the, the common narrative out there is that, that Gary Gygax basically invented Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so he's held up you know, in the narrative slash mythology. And this happens with every hobby or every movement or whatever. There's usually a person who's held up almost, almost venerated. uh, And, 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 and the official story becomes less nuanced than it was in real life. We also have this guy, Dave Arneson, who contributed him and his gaming group contributed a lot to what became tabletop role-playing, you know, D and D and otherwise. They met in the, it was either late sixties or early, I think early seventies. And it was basically like, there used to be these commercials for Reese's peanut butter cups where somebody would have chocolate and somebody would have peanut butter and they would bump into each other and the chocolate would fall into the peanut butter and they would be mad for a second. And then they would try it and they'd go, that's amazing. But the point is you wouldn't get that amazing taste without both the chocolate and the peanut butter. Do you follow me? I am. That makes sense. Okay. So to me, the Gary Gygax and they, and the reason I'm bringing this up because this documentary coming out has brought the discussion up again, a little bit of people, you know, saying, Oh, it's Dave versus Gary or Gary versus Dave, or Gary was a jerk or this, that, and the other. And there was some stuff. Gary Gygax started TSR, the company that published Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. And, and at first, Dave Arneson was very involved, but then he got kind of phased out. And and, if, and and there was a game called Dungeons & Dragons, and Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax's name w- was like they invented this game or whatever. And then they made Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and Dave Arneson's name was dropped off of that because they said this is a different game, and he missed out on the money and all that from that. Okay, so... That I'm not disputing. That's an uncool move. I don't know if Gary was completely behind that or if it was corporate. I have no idea. And so if they want to say that was a, that Dave was done wrong, then I, you know, yeah, he was done wrong. But when it comes to philosophically saying Gary invented role playing or Dave invented role playing or whatever, it's, it's a pointless conversation. Okay. Cause it's, you, you don't have one without the other. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Gary Gygax was incredibly instrumental 
in creating Dungeons and Dragons and getting it published and, and helping push the role playing game hobby, which was brand new at the time. Dave Arneson was incredibly instrumental in inventing role playing and what became Dungeons and Dragons and working with Gary Gygax on the rules for Dungeons and Dragons. And then it got, pu- they're both, you can, you take one out and we don't get D and D yep. you take the other one out. We don't de- get D and D. And if you don't get D and D you don't have the tabletop role-playing hobby like we have it now. Correct. So it's, it's a ridiculous argument. Now, like I said, if people want to say, well, Dave got done wrong financially. Yeah. That's a whole different argument, but you know, somebody else uh, the other day was was really ranting. It's like, why do you even need a, a, a documentary like Secrets of Blackmore? Everybody knows this stuff. And no, not everybody knows this stuff. Right. Because it, it went from something called war gaming to this thing called Bra- Bronstein style of gaming or Brownstein, which was a proto role playing to role playing to D&D. And, 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 you know, there was this whole chain of events and then you had this thing called chain mail and all this other stuff. But when it comes to actually who invented role playing and D and D they're, they're, they are, they are, their DNA is tied up. You can't separate them. So if you call yourself an Arneson man or you call yourself a Gygax man, you're confused. Okay. You don't get it at all without both of them. It was a perfect storm of them coming together. So I just want to say, stop, <laughs> stop it. You know, the, the new people coming into the hobby don't know this stuff. Make it positive for them. Don't turn it into, don't put like, I, I like to say, don't, don't put them like they're two crawdads in a jar and you're shaking the jar up to make them fight. Yeah. You know, don't do that. You know, and, 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 and you know, what Dave Arneson created and added was beautiful. And in a lot of ways, what Gary Gygax added was beautiful, but where he was really important was the business sense to get the game out there and to codify things. So, you know, anyway, I just want to throw that out there. They both contributed. And there's a fascinating, amazing history to D&D in the tabletop role-playing hobby. So go go investigate it. And don't make it about one person versus the other. They're just normal people like us. They're not perfect. So, you know, go, go investigate it. It's really interesting. How much, how much time we got left there, dude? You got 20 seconds, 20 seconds. All right. I got to give you the bad joke of the week. Go Are ahead. You ready? Mm-hmm. Here's the bad joke of the week, dude. All right. Here it comes. All right. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? I don't know. So he said supplies. <sighs> <laughs> <sighs> All right, everybody, we'll catch you next week on Shane Plays. Mmm, chocolate. Mmm, peanut butter. Ooh. Hey, you got chocolate on my peanut butter. You got peanut butter on my chocolate. That was good. It's really good. Yeah, I like this. Two great tastes that taste great together. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Real milk chocolate. Good old-fashioned peanut butter. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual? For as little as $1 an episode, simply go to patreon.com slash Shane 